Hey, my courageous Capricorn, and welcome to your weekly reading, uh, general reading. This is just a general reading, so please do take what resonates and toss the rest. Also, if you haven't checked out your love bonus, your abundance bonus, which is more career and finance oriented, or your moon reading, please do so. They're all up on my channel. And otherwise, please do like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell so you don't miss the June readings that are going up soon. And without further ado, let's get to it, shall we? All right, we don't do reversals on these weekly readings, but we do on the longer readings, the bonus readings, the monthly readings, etc. So just to let you know. All right, let's see what we got going on here, and then we will uh, elaborate as we go. So it does look like we are starting with the death card. So I feel like you guys are, if you haven't already kind of put something to rest, um, you need to be, okay? So this death card is only uh, bad in real life. Uh, in tarot, it's actually not a bad card, right? Because it's where you end something that needs to end, right? So this allows you to kind of begin anew, right? So for some of you, depending on where you are, time is fluid in tarot. So some of you may have already kind of stopped something, meaning maybe you left a really toxic job, bad job. Maybe you left a really bad home situation. Maybe you left... Uh, you know, you've cut off family members that were toxic, you've uh, left a relationship that was doing you no service. Um, but for whatever reason, um, if you haven't, for sure do so, okay? Because this card is telling you that that is not going to do you any uh, favors going forward. Um, but once it is done, once you have ended that, you will release that negative energy and that will allow you to receive positive energy, right? Because if you keep that around, if you don't end it, it could be catastrophic, right? It's this death card is like, in no uncertain terms, this has to come to a close, this chapter, whatever it is, and take it as it resonates. You specifically should know what it is in your life. Maybe it's more than one thing, but I'm sure that you know what this is probably referring to like, yeah, my relationship is terrible or my job, I've been really looking for something else or thinking about leaving this place for five years, you know, something like that. So I'm sure that there's something that you're thinking of there. But right here, uh, the two of swords kind of lets me know that you are going to, you know, you're going to make a decision, a courageous de decision that is going to, you know, it's going to require you to really kind of just make a, a gut choice, right? Because if you see they're blindfolded here, right? So obviously, you know, it's kind of like, I'm going to just cut through the bowl. I'm going to make the choice to cut it out, cut it loose, do what I need to do. Um, I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to think about it. I just know it has to go. It's not feel, it doesn't feel right, right? You know, your intuition's telling you it's not right. You know, you're feelings are telling you it's not right. And for many of you, your head's been telling you for even longer than that, this isn't right. This doesn't feel right. This sucks. This situation is crap. I need to fix this. And maybe you've just gotten complacent in it, or it's just convenient, even if it does suck, you know, or it's something that, you know, is kind of safe in the way. And I, I use that term loosely, um, but it's safe in the way that like for jobs, for example, you know that it's a check you can expect every week. Um, or every two weeks or whatever, and you know it's coming regardless, so you can kind of count on it, right? It's pretty stable. So, you know, even though you're miserable, even though you don't like it, even though you don't like the people maybe you work with or whatever, maybe, um, you know, or you don't see a future there long term or whatever, you know that it kind of, it's kind of caused complacency because of safety or whatever. But here you're like, no, I, this is it. I'm making the decision to jump ship do something different with my life. You know, you only live once. It's short and sweet, you know, and I get one chance at this and I'm not going to spend it sitting here because I'm afraid to, you know, try something that I really want or do something I really want, you know. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to cut it. This is a, a kind of a courageous decision feeling. Um, and down here we have the devil card. So I do feel like for many of you, this is something, again, that you have been bound to and they've kept you bound to it, right? I feel like whatever the situation is, whether this is a relationship with somebody who's narcissistic, right? The two people tied together um, where they have made you dependent on them. They've groomed you in a way that's kept you kind of either financially dependent on them or where you're in a mental state that you feel 
you couldn't do without them because that's what they've conditioned you to think. That's what they do, right? They, you know, the devil does that. That's what those kind of toxic relationships are often about. They're about, you know, convincing you you couldn't make it without them. You couldn't do any better. Nobody else would take you. Those kinds of things, right? That's what that is. And so maybe you're stuck in it because of that. Or maybe it's a work situation where you feel like you're tied to it or bound to it because you know, your employers have told you there's nobody, nowhere else you're going to go and make this kind of money and be able to have these kind of work hours and this kind of whatever, whatever, whatever. And, you know, maybe you've believed that because that's what they've told you, but it's not necessarily true. If you got out and you did some research, if you looked around on the internet, if you took some time to talk to people, you know, go to a headhunter, those kinds of things where they find jobs, you know, you might find out that you could probably make as much or more possibly. Uh, you know, I don't know your situation specifically, but a lot of times, you know, especially after the big resignations that we've come through, you know, there are a lot of people that have got positions open that, you know, they're willing to pay more for than ever before. So your talents and skills may be, you know, unprecedented in the, to them and may really garner some really good pay. And you've never really gone out there and looked at it because you've been told by this person, this, you know, this boss, this family member who is like, you don't want to risk that job. You don't want to risk that whatever, you know, you don't want to take that, that, step and then you know really regret it you know whatever it is but that's what devil energy does it convinces you that you can't do anything better you couldn't make it you couldn't you know so again remember that this devil energy may very much be even after you decide to cut ties they may continue to try to convince you to try to come around and say listen they may try to come back in if you've already cut ties with an ex and you're still uh, you know, trying to decide what I want, what do I want to do now? I've made the decision to cut ties, but now I'm kind of at a crossroads with, you know, I'm struggling a little bit financially because they, I was in a relationship where I wasn't the primary breadwinner. They used that against me. So I am struggling a little bit there or, you know, job wise, I left for a different job and now I make a little bit less or something, but in the long run, you might make more, but right now, you know, that kind of thing. So it's one of those situations. So you might have those people coming back to you and going, yeah, well, you know what? You had it so good here. How do you like it now? Why don't you come back? You know, you, you could have everything. They may even be promising you the world, but it's breadcrumbing, right? Because listen, you know what that situation was like, right? You know that they could promise the world. And then even if they delivered a little bit or delivered for a short time, it never was long-term positivity because if it was, you wouldn't have felt that way in the first place. You wouldn't have felt like it needed to end, right? So just keep remembering that the devil will take many forms. They may come back sweet as pie offering what seems to be a fantastic you know, option, especially if they see that you're vulnerable or struggling a little bit based on your decisions um, you know, or you're at a crossroads with something like, okay, I have to either downsize or I can't afford this place anymore. You know, these kinds of decisions I'm facing too because of this, this breakup or this leaving this job, whatever. They'll come back and say, hey, no, you don't, you really don't have to give up that. Look, you could come back, you know, so be forewarned that that may very well be on the table, but avoid that, right? That's devil energy. And that's also going to get you back in a situation that you know needed to die from the first place. That was a situation you needed to kill, kill off, right? It wasn't a good thing for you in the first place. Why would you want to go back to it? You wouldn't, right? Okay, we got a jumper here for our challenge card. This is the Knight of Cups. So... I do feel here like this is um, an opportunity, uh, someone coming into you that could be either helping you along the way, or it could be a love interest opportunity. Um, but I do feel like this opportunity is kind of like twofold in its way that it's going to be causing issues because on one hand, while you may appreciate this, right? The other hand, this is going to make this person more likely to be annoyed, right? If they see somebody trying to help you, that goes against everything that they've done, right? Their whole entire principle has been to try to uh, make you feel like you can't make it without them, right? So this is going to be something that's going to make them come at you harder and maybe not in a good way. If, Like I said, devil can take many forms. They can come in a very nice way and, and offer things. Um, or if they feel like you don't need it because you have somebody else to help you, they could come very nasty at you, right? 
This could be somebody coming really nasty, an ex, you know, coming really hard for you, being mean, nasty, hateful, those kinds of things. It could be, uh, you know, your last job refusing to give you good referrals, things like that, just just to be nasty or whatever because they're, they're bitter and they're devil energy, right? Because everything about somebody being good to you, kind to you, helping you uh, is really going against what they've tried to drill into your head, right? That you couldn't do better somewhere else. You couldn't get better. You need them, right? So this is like a challenge for you. Even though it's a help for you, it's also going to bring about challenge for you, I feel like. Um, so I do feel like this is somebody coming in who wants to help you. A good, decent person could be somebody for a relationship, could be a family member or friend that's going to try to aid you in, you know, do you need a place to stay? Do you need some cash injection to help you get through it? Do you need me to put in a good word for you at a job? You know, it could be something like that. Literally like a knight in shining armor for you. Um, but again, that could be a triggering situation. So that person who's really trying to do great may be causing things to be even harder on you because it would make this devil take a harder stance, harder stance, harder stance. So just be careful with that um, or be careful with the way that you share their help with this kind of person. You know, if they're coming around, don't say, don't, I don't need you, you know, I've got such and such helping me because all that's gonna do is fuel this fire, right? So maybe just at the very least, be kind of cautious and, and careful with that. You don't wanna stir anything any more than it's already stirred up with a devil energy, right? So let's get the psychic deck out here and look at the death card, see if it gives us any uh, further information or insight on that. All right, here we go. And we have triumphant success. So I do feel like what the psychic deck is telling you, um, spirit, what have you, is that in order to re you know receive any or achieve any success whatsoever, and I do think you will absolutely achieve triumphant success. I certainly do think you're going to have plenty of help too, uh, more than you actually expect. I think you'll be surprised, and it'll be unexpected how much help you actually get. But um, point being here that I think that you're going to have triumphant success, but only when you cut off this situation, right? Because this situation is no good. It needs to go. It's obviously, you know, involving people that are not good for you whatsoever. Um, and the best thing you can do is leave that negativity behind and move forward into a better, more positive space, right? And the moon deck here is giving you the hunger card. So again, what it's telling you is you are making good decisions for yourself, okay? You're making gut decisions. You're following your, you know, your primal instinct, really. Doing what your instincts are telling you. Not necessarily what fear is telling you or other things are saying, oh goodness, I won't be able to make it or this or that. You know, all that self-doubt that you might have. You are saying, no, I, this doesn't feel right. It's not right. I, I'm not going to put up with it anymore. I am going to do, you know, what my instincts tell me, which is more of a primal situation, much like this wolf here, right? And this wolf is telling you, stay hungry, right? Stay following your primal instincts to do what is best for you. Go for what you want, okay? By getting rid of this negative, focus on you and your hunger and drive for positive success, right? And the only way you're ever going to get that is if you get out from under this cloud of somebody who is... Um, you know, weighing you down, keeping you trapped in a, you know, bad relationship, bad home situation, bad job situation. You can't excel if you're kind of like stuck in a situation, right? So stay hungry, right? And again, people will be there to help you. I do believe that. Absolutely. Especially when you're putting out that vibe. I'm hungry. I'm ready to fight for it. You know, it's like your friends can't show up for you until you do. Well, you're showing up, so I think your friends will too, absolutely, right? So I think that's certainly what's going to happen there, and I think that that's going to be a good thing, but again, I would kind of keep it under wraps if this person is coming around, because they may come around first, like I said, being sweet as pie with, oh, you know, you don't need to do this or that. Uh, you could come back, and I could take care of all these bills for you or all this, or you could come back, and I can give you a raise, and you'll be sitting so pretty, yada, 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 all, whatever it may be. But if you come out and go, I don't need you. I've got help from such and such. I'm staying with this friend. You know, I've got such and such hooking me up with a job. I've got such and such, you know, whatever. Then this person is going to lose the run of themselves, right? That's when they're going to be like, nope. Okay, so that's what you don't want to do. 
because that's going to just cause them to be worse. And that's not what we need. We don't need worse, right? We need better. So let's pull an angel card on your devil here and close you out. All right. So we have knowledge. Okay. And this is going to be your biggest asset, right? Knowledge is always your biggest asset, number one. Um, in anything right the more you know but in this particular deck in this particular card it's not just book knowledge this is knowledge about you personally how you feel about yourself what you want which is you know tied directly into this decision making up here uh choosing what is going to be the best for you and leaving behind the things that aren't and that's exactly what this is about so knowledge here being on the devil card i think specifically is that your guardian angel is going to help you you know get the knowledge on you know how to finesse and how to deal with this person in a way that is going to be the least confrontational okay and that again is what i think is so important here because i think you, this could become a major challenge or this could become just a major asset uh the less this person knows so the more you know and the less this person gets to know or is privy to the better you'll be. And I think that's something that you need to keep in mind because that's absolutely important, right? We want to keep this one in the dark um, and keep them just out of your out of your personal affairs altogether as much as you possibly can. As many ties as you can cut off with this devil, that's the best thing you can do, right? That is keeping you in the light of knowledge and keeping them completely in the dark. That's the best thing you can do where the devil belongs, right? <laughs> Banished to the dark, right? So hopefully this resonated with you. If it did, please do like, subscribe, share, all that other great stuff. And I hope to see you back soon. Bye.